We're back. It's another episode. Last week was kind of a mess. That was uh, not the way I was planning to end the episode, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. So, I kind of rethink things, and I didn't spend any time on the car like during the week. Usually I'll spend a few days just come out, after work, tinker around with whatever needs to be done. But I decided not to this week just because I was like, I'm going to give myself a break away from the car and kind of take a step back and bigger picture type deal. So, at this point, we had a really nice week of weather, so I think what I'm going to do, the plan is just start attacking it as if I'm getting it ready to drive. So, instead of just thinking, all right, let's make the bumper perfect, let's make the flares perfect, let's make everything perfect. I'm gonna get to a point where I can drive, so that way I'll literally be able to drive it, enjoy it, get the most out of the car, actually get the worth out of it, and then uh, and then slowly we'll go through perfecting everything. So here's what getting to a, a point where I could drive it actually is going to look like. So we have a few things that we just need to get checked off and then we'll be good essentially it's not as hard as it seems but it will be a bit tedious so as you can expect the biggest thing is going to be the front bumper but it's not actually making it smooth or anything um, I need to make mounts for the wood I know I've gotten quite a few comments about the wood being heavy and not great but I do want to keep it because I don't trust myself with a fiberglass enough at this point to experiment for the first time to get it smooth to the point that I want it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make mounts hard mount this so it's essentially a chassis mount with the wood so that way the wood will be set in place no matter what and it'll be like structurally held on like I could take off all the extra support all the curvature and anything and it'll hold itself on just fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up the car this is going to be the project for today first raise up the car and then use metal to make the hard mounts to hold the bumper or that piece of wood on that's the biggest thing that needs to be done small things that aren't important is I want to get spacers for the front and the back to fill them out make the wheels look pretty decent. Um, I do need to cut underneath here. Nice part is if the weather's getting nicer, I don't know how to weld, but I can be able to cut it to get it to get the clearance, um, get everything ready to be welded, and then get a friend to help me weld that later. But I also wanna try experimenting with a way to cut it and not need to weld, because I think if I go with the BS for build route of his original and just fold it up, rivet it in, and then I can seal it from there. Because the big thing is you just need to have it sealed to be waterproof. I think I could do that, but just in case. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the front bumper. The plan is that we're gonna go ahead and jack the car up and then use some metal to make some mounts for the front, middle, and back, just enough to hold the bumper in place solidly. So I wanna make it so we can bolt it up um, in and out, make it so, like I said, solidly. I don't know what I'm saying. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. But we're gonna make this a good, hard mount so I don't have to worry about it bumper or anything. And those of you who are worried about it, can't, I freaking hate you, move out of the way. But for those of you who are worried about the front bumper scraping, don't, because we're going to be addressing that later on. So no worries there. We're gonna tackle that when we get to it. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it is solidly mounted. Two hours later. So we got the car up on jack stands and we have some pretty good news. So <laughs> I went and remeasured everything and this side is still a little bit higher, but it's only higher by less than half an inch which is good. And so I found out that the culprit is the suspension. So this side is fine. I mean, it doesn't matter what one side's off, but this other side is about a half inch lower. So a half inch plus that difference made up for that actual like inch difference or whatever it was for one side sagging. So that's cool that I have that figured out now. Wow, did I just not record any of that? Oh my goodness, well I have no idea what just recorded, so I'm gonna say this again. I went through a whole spiel and then found out that the camera was off. Anyway, we're gonna make a mount to there, we're gonna make a mount to there. This side's gonna be the first one to go. We're gonna make it symmetrical because that way they're exactly the same. We're gonna bolt, bolt them up to the wood on each side. The wood is already really solid. So, it's, people are getting worried about it, I understand. It's not as bad as it seems. It was already made really well. When you shake the wood just a little bit, it shakes the whole entire thing. And I could put some weight on it. I don't want to stress it too much because I don't know the limits. But once you make the mounts here and there, will be A-O heck and K. Once again, not too worried about it. I am planning to have, I want to, I think I want to do some like extreme struts from here up to the bumper itself. Put some metal backing on the back there and then have it hold itself. So that's TBD, which is code for to be determined. So we're going to start with that and then we'll get to it later. All right, so I got a plan and I wanted to show you guys the deal. So, cause I'm gonna have to make this off the bench. So I wanted to show you down here what it'll look like. So we have this L bracket and I chose it because I have enough to cut one and make a mirror for the other side exactly. So I have this L bracket here and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna bolt this 
it will be, this side will be bolted into the splitter obviously and then up top there's the two 10 millimeter bolts right behind this that I took out and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this um, up I'm going to cut off one end make it an L um, I'm going to leave a little lip on there so that way it's kind of curved all the way up anywho I'm going to cut it and I'm going to mount it on the back side of this so we're going to drill a couple holes into here um, give it a couple strong mounting points then hook it up so that way it's solidly mounted between the two. So that's the plan. We're going to head over to the workbench and then get this done. Alright, so we got the front bumper splitter mounted with the back mounts. I do need to get those front struts. It just will make me feel a lot better about how safe it is um, that it's not going to fall off. But it's so much more solid than it was. Like, there's just the support in the back. Jikes. Jeez, I hate when I edit these videos because I can't speak. But there's support in the back, which is great. That's probably very shadowy on my face because, yeah, I can't tell. Let me show you guys what I did, though. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, so we got that one mount that's on the driver's side and then on the passenger side, same exact thing mirrored. It's just black because I had it painted before, but it's the exact same thing. Um, the cool part was I actually reused a bunch of screws off the Supra to mount it up top there and on the bottom just because they're longer, so it let me go through more distance. Um, I'm really happy about this because it's just the back, oops, just almost stabbed myself with metal. But the back, when I push down, it is like legitimately so like, like it's solid. The only movement is up here in the front. Um, it has enough flex, which is fine. But yeah, I just, ow, jeez. I got splintered, aw. But I do wanna still get splitter struts from the bottom here to up top. I'm gonna connect to the splitter that we have, but just connecting the bumper just to make sure they go up. Um, I think it'll actually look pretty cool, kinda of look kind of extreme, but that's kinda of what we're going for, so it'll work out great. I'm just debating whether or not to get two or three, honestly, if I wanna do one big one down the middle and then two on the sides or just two because I think it'll look cool because I need something to fill that gap anyway because it's, it's just a huge hole so I think that'll be perfect. The next thing that I want to do is I want to tackle getting one of the seats in the driver's seat specifically. So I bought these Corbet, I don't know how to pronounce it, black seats. I bought these seats for the Mustang because while well, they're getting upholstered I wanted to have something a seat in so my brother could drive it but as things worked out, it's just a bit much to put on insurance right now and uh, for my parents. And I was like, okay, cool. That's great, because they're making other seats anyway. Long story short, the long-term goal is to get these to put in the Nissan. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put one of them in on the driver's side, so that way I could use this other one for the Mustang in the meantime, so my brother can still drive it uh, when we get it all good to go. But, but the reason why I only had this one sitting here on the passenger side out is because I actually couldn't get this side, as in the driver's side out, with the car on the ground because it has a bolt through on the back bracket on that far side. I think both actually maybe, but um, the bolt goes straight through and I couldn't unbolt it on top because it's just spinning because it's a bolt to a nut. There's no actual like threaded nut in the car itself like most cars. It's one bolt on top or not on top with a bolt on the bottom or vice versa. But anyway, the plan is now that we have the car up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and yank out and with the box. I'm gonna go ahead and yank out the driver's seat and then replace that with the Corbio seat so that way we'll have one race seat in. I'm also looking to get rid of the steering wheel because I wanna get one that is black with, um, oh, unlike the Supra, which is black inside with a black suede outside and then a little stripe. Preferably I'm going for red because I think I wanna, I'm leaning towards making the car red. If not, it'd match the interior anyway, so. If you have one and you want the steering wheel, the steering wheel's in okay condition, it's not fantastic. I don't know how well I can show you guys, not really from here, but there's some like scratches and stuff on it and like little chips of paint and stuff that have kind of been coming off, so yeah. But I'm gonna need to get a new steering wheel anyway, so I might give this one away, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll clean it up, paint it a different color or something. I could always paint it, but I just really want that suede on the outside. I could get a leather steering wheel too. I have leftover leather. I know, I'm thinking through ideas. I also need to take off those stupid stickers because one, they're stupid. Two, they block the tachometer and the speedometer, so I wanna see both when I drive. Long story short, we're moving seats. Let's do it.
legs. How does my hair look? Oh, stupid, holy cow. But <laughs> the seats are mostly in. I have one bolt left to do. It's the back right bolt if you're facing forward. It's one of the back bolts. Uh, for some reason, it's like inch and a half above where the hole is supposed to be. Even though it's in the right spot, it's just up in the air. So the thing got warped a little bit. I don't know. The sliders suck. I couldn't even scoot the seat forward. It's a pain in the half. Same on the Mustang ones when I use the seats. That they just don't slide, which is one of the reasons I'm able to use this seat is because I'm converting the driver's side back to the electric. I'm just going to do an adapter plate so that way I can still use the sliding part of... Yeah. I know what I'm saying, but anyway, so that's that. On to the next thing. Alright, so now I need to figure out something to do because I'm kind of a little bit ahead of scheduler and it's only Saturday, so I have tomorrow to work as well. Probably only going to work half the day tomorrow because I think I have family coming over. I'm grabbing the mic as I'm doing this, so that's going to sound bad. I apologize. Um, I have some other big things that we're going to do. There's kind of three big things that are happening left, not counting finishing the front bumper. Before we really kind of call this good, maybe four or five things. Five things, six things, seven things. Yeah. But I want to get it driving pretty much is the idea, so I can enjoy it while it's nice out. Um, and then we'll go from there and do other things along the way, like we'll kind of park the car and over the weekend we'll do some other things. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the big things. Are you guys excited for them coming up? Because I'm excited for them, so you should be excited for them. And if we're both excited, then that makes two of us. Yeah. Anyway, here's the things. Too many tangents. One is the first small thing, which is the first tangent. I need to get the correct size spacers. So these are only one inch. I need to measure those out, make sure I think I'm gonna need two inch on the front and back, because it just doesn't quite fill out. Cutting that out, all that finishing the flare stuff, I don't count, but that's kind of bundling it up, as in big things is the spacer stuff. Also, quick question from me. Someone help me out with the suspension. I actually was ironically looking into suspension types earlier, and I know I believe this is a form of double wishbone suspension, but I'm not entirely sure because it looks like double, double wishbone suspension because there's a control arm there, a control arm there, but then on the other side, we also have a control arm there and a control arm there with the McPherson strut, strut as well. So I would assume it gives it more variability, variability. Like I get how this one is further f out towards the car than that one because the whole camera angle as the car turns into corners and roll and stuff, but I just don't get the as the rest of it. So if someone wants to explain the threats and where they suspension down below or send me a link to something, that I should be really appreciated. I love learning about cars because I honestly, as you can tell, don't really know a lot. So also, anytime you see me do something wrong, say something in the comments and honestly, I do read those and I try to put your practice or what you say into practice if you haven't noticed because I'm learning so I need all the tips I can get. Another big thing that's happening is we're going to be making a diffuser. My, I have two ways I might do this. Way one depends on if a friend wants to buy or wants to, I already told him I'd sell him. The diffuser from the Super, I have it, that's what this is. It's all deconstructed and everything, but if he wants it, I can send that his way. If not, what I'm planning to do is to use the centerpiece to make the diffuser here. I use the two side pieces and then we'll make something custom for this end here to kind of fill it out. So that's the plan is for that, but that'll come a little bit down the road. Here, I got donated car speakers. So there's four car speakers and then I have a sub somewhere over yonder area and this is already wired up for a sub and I've never actually had a car with a good stereo. So I think I might go try doing that with what we have here, kind of if I can somewhat enjoy it a little bit. And then the final thing is gonna be the coolest thing, which I'm, we're probably gonna start next, maybe, is I wanna make this somewhat look like a spider top. So let me see if I can move this. Okay, that's the best we're getting. So the idea is I wanna make something that connects from the top of this ro little roll bar here to the back of the black here, maybe even all the way further back to the end of the to the end of the hard top, but I'm thinking probably just right there. That'll kind of just be like a triangle straight down. Kind of fill out the back of the car, like as you look at from it from a side driving or parked, it looks kind of silly to me, in my opinion, just having this bar and then nothing else. So I'm gonna to try to get that something to connect to make it look a little bit better. And then the final big thing that's gonna be pushed off a little bit, it's gonna kind of happen when it happens, I guess, is gonna be the tail lights and the signal lights up front. I have lights that kind of run and go so what I want to do is something like that, where it has those. That, yeah. Also, I want to do the whole JDM conversion light thing by doing it yourself with the thingy thing that the one guy did, and he race card and and then he's got lights and they go, they light up. They got stripes and this one's white and this one's black and it's cool. Oh yeah, I need to fix the trunk. Dang. 
I forgot about that. I don't want to do that. I honestly don't. But... <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah, duck ducktail. I need to make a ducktail. I want to make a ducktail. I don't want to make a ducktail, but I want to. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't either, so we'll figure something out. Anyway, we need to do something today. All right, this is the rest of today's project. What we're going to do is we're going to take this front little cowl thing and one of the mounts broke off, we're going to fix it. We're also going to fill in these holes in the back here because they also broke out on these sides, which makes it sit low. So this gasket's all warped up. It's like sticking up or whatever, so we need to fix that. So that is going to be the tack for the day, task tusk. Plus there's a million little scratches and stuff. So we need to fix it. So that's the plan. All right, so that's curing. It's just, it's gonna be an easy one because all I need to do is drill the holes out. I don't even think I need to sand it because usually when I do the prepping with the tape, um, it does a good job of holding it. And then when I take the tape off nice and smooth on the back side, plus they're just holes that aren't gonna be seen. And it's just getting drilled out in the correct position. I went ahead and filled all the holes because I wasn't entirely sure how well they all were fitting. So I figured might as well just knock them all out, fill them all in and then we'll be good. Oh yeah, so the hiccup burps. But yeah, I also use the excess um, for the table because this is an old, old work table. Like, I don't know how old. It's been here since we moved here and uh, yeah, years of me drilling holes and crap and stuff and this is the right center workway. So let's we'll let it dry and then take the sandpaper and kind of sand the whole table because it really needs it. So anyway, I figured I might as well just throw it on and fill in some of the holes I've drilled and stuff. So yeah. Anyway, that's really all I have for this video. Um, I think tomorrow, is Sunday, so I think I'm just gonna start working on one of the bigger projects that I mentioned just so you guys can have a full video. Thanks for sticking for the intermediate video, intermediate video. The, I know these are sometimes a little more on the boring side, but yeah, I was happy. So um, in response to last week's video where I kinda was bummed to all heck, I am very, very much feeling better, especially now that I measured the bumper and um, it's at a spot where it's like just like only a half inch off, if that even. So that's cool, that's really encouraging just to know that, hey, someone just did the struts wrong. Also, I figured out why the seat wouldn't bolt up on that last bolt. I think I mentioned, uh, I went underneath. Looks like someone used one of the spots as a jacking point, so woo -woo, finally someone did something stupid other than me, so hey. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them, I'm not upset. People do stupid things on cars, mostly just because they don't know, which I honestly don't know, so I'm, I know there are mechanics who have watched my videos who are, will rail me in the comments and it's awesome. But anyway, that's it. Um, you can dislike, unsubscribe, hate in the comments, do the usual. I'm actually just gonna go play piano for a few minutes and I'll set you guys down. You can enjoy it. If you wanna leave, leave. If not, I'm gonna tinker around. We have one and that's kinda what I do in the garage when I kinda get bummed out. And I'll just go stop and play piano for probably 10 or 15 minutes. So it's not gonna be that long, <laughs> maybe three minutes tops, but enjoy a song or leave. Your choice. It's a free country, or at least it is where I am. Everywhere's awesome. I don't know where I'm gonna go with this. Praise the Lord, all right.